Hey Health Junkies, it's time for The Health Fix. Join your host doctor, Janine Krause, as she gives you a dose of what you need to know and do right now to take control of your health from the inside out to rebel against aging, look damn good, fight stress, and laugh every day. Hello there, Health Junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krause. Today's episode, we are going to be talking about how to reduce anxiety and put your nerves in check by checking out some intuition training. Now, intuition training can be considered sensory training. And in my last podcast, episode 103, I talked about training for balance and proprioception to reduce pain. And this one, I'm wanting to talk all about how we can train our senses to be more sharp, to be more intuitive, to know when something's not right, to feel it out, and to go with your gut. And so I know a lot of people poo-poo the idea of gut feelings and trusting your gut, but I have found over and over again in my life and many other people's lives that gut feelings really are an important feeling in addition to tasting and smelling and hearing. And because we're unfortunately so disconnected from our own bodies this day and age, a lot of times we miss signs and we miss cues from our body that could really help us in our healing process, our calming our nervous system, and just feeling better in our body and feeling more calm in our body. Because anxiety if you will, in some cases, really is a warning sign from the body that something's not right. And a lot of people will go through different series in their body in terms of trying to figure out what's wrong with them medically, are they missing neurochemicals, things of that nature. And I think that's great to go through all that. And if we go through all that and certain neurochemicals are off like say serotonin and we work on fixing that with something like 5-HTP which is known as 5-hydroxytryptophan or if we work on it with meditation whatever it may be we find that it can help greatly and that might be the issue but it could also be other issues too and so today I'm going to talk about our senses and and there's nine main senses that I'm going to talk about today in relation to the body feeling comfortable in relation to us being able to interpret our surroundings much better. So you might be thinking, okay, what provoked me to talk about this? Well, oddly enough, I was out to dinner with a group of friends and we were in the restaurant talking about active shooter situations. Timely information at this stage of the game with all of the gun violence that we have in the world and in the United States in particular right now. But what we were talking about was if someone came in and was an active shooter, would we be able to identify them walking up looking strange before the event actually was set into motion? So our conversation also turned to talking about our experiences now, say, going to a movie. My one gal pal was like, yeah, every time I sit down in a movie theater, I'm looking to figure out what is my quickest exit out of this place? And I think a lot of people do have that in the back of their minds, but I think that's only one aspect. Being prepared is one aspect. It's also being able to be very tied into your senses. Like I've said before, I've talked a lot about balance and proprioception, meaning, you know, not tripping, being able to move very quickly and in a very connected motion. And you know, not tripping, moving more fluidly. And one of those things would be to get out of a situation. If you were more agile, you would likely be able to flee a situation. So now I don't want to turn this into talking about gun violence or anything negative in that department. It just stemmed out of a conversation with friends that, you know, a lot of us probably aren't in tune with our senses as much as we should be. One of the big things in terms of senses that I find in my office and even with myself, as if you've learned, listened to any of my podcasts, you've learned that I like to overeat when I'm stressed. And I think a lot of people 
tend to overeat. And I think a lot of us eat so fast we don't even taste our food or even really smell it for that matter. So when looking at senses, we have a lot of different opportunities for improving our health by becoming more aware of ourselves and our intuition, otherwise known as our senses. Intuition truly does have to be, it does have a huge connection with everything that you feel, you sense, you taste, you smell. It's, it's huge. Now, my big question that my friends and I kind of posed going through this conversation about active shooters and what we would do in a situation in this case is, We were wondering that if you go into a situation like this, being actively stressed, does that block you from using your intuition and your senses properly? I don't know. Something to ponder. And in my case, in how I kind of look at everything, I go, you know, if I want to work on calming my nervous system down, I feel like I need to take away a lot of clutter that's around my nervous system. Disconnecting a little bit from social media and podcasts like myself and hoping that you guys do the same here and there to to get into your sensory world. Because I feel like a lot of us and myself included, I'm starting to notice deficits. I mentioned in the previous podcast, 103, that I'm noticing balance issues and needing to work on that as I'm getting into my 40s. I'm also noticing that seeing is, a, is an issue for me, sight. And a lot of folks joke, oh, yeah, that's part of getting older. Well, yes, it is. And, and seeing in the dark and seeing my acupuncture needles in my office in the dark, I've noticed it's becoming more difficult for me. And I'm going, hmm, I need to train my sight to work a little bit better. Because how often do I go out at night and try to see things or identify things? I don't. And could I potentially train my sight at night to improve doing those sorts of things? Now, my naturopathic medicine self tells me that I need to have more beta carotene in my diet. need more vitamin A, so yams, (laughs) getting in more mango, and getting in carrots, Definitely on top of that. In fact, it's oddly enough, I've been on a kick of all orange foods lately. Don't know what that's about. But there you have it. So what I'm going to talk about today going forward is really how to think about your senses and what senses am I even talking about here? Because a lot of folks think about five of them in terms of sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch. But we also have balance, so our proprioception, and we have our movement, our mechanoreceptors, and we have chemoreceptors, which respond to changes in salt, so sodium, in our bloodstream and changes in terms of chemicals in our bloodstream. And so sometimes when we are dehydrated, sometimes when other chemicals are thrown off like carbon dioxide, we can also become anxious. And a lot of times when we're breathing short, and not taking good, deep breaths will tend to make ourselves more anxious. So it can be very simply the difference between breathing throughout the day, even overnight, by the way, because there's also a connection with anxiety and sleep apnea. But it could be that, or it could be that all of your senses are overloaded. They're not working like they they used to. They're not we have we don't have them fine tuned. If we fine tune our senses, we fine tune our nervous system and we can work on calming our nerves and our anxiety. Why? Because we're better able to predict things that are going to happen in our environment. We are more connected to our environment. So okay, if this theory does does make sense to you, I definitely would say it's worth it to consider testing some of these guys or training, probably a better word. Let's use training your senses. And it's just as good as improving your intuition. It's the same thing. The better you are at sensing your environment, the better are you are at sensing is something right, is something wrong, is something off. So if we go back to this active shooter, shooter situation for a minute If you saw a man coming into a restaurant in a long trench coat and bundled up in the middle of a hot day in August, does that seem right? No, absolutely not. 
would you have even seen this individual? Well, there's nothing you can do if you are turned back to this, the entrance of where this individual will come in. But if you were turned the proper way to be able to see them and you've been scanning your environment and you're just kind of getting used to where you're at, you can notice these things. You can be called to pay attention to these things. Same thing goes with smelling certain smells. We all know that the gas smell is a, is a smell we want to be paying, atten paying attention to because that's a sign of danger, fire, burning smells, things of that nature. Always important. But what about smells that make us happy and calm us? What about smells that are ones that we want to go after? It's why aromatherapy is such a huge market, why people find aromatherapy so useful. It's because it helps us to hone in on our sense of smell. And then smell is so connected to memory. Now we have a two for one there because we want to be in touch with our favorite smells. So that being said, what about lifestyle stuff? One thing that I find really interesting with helping to train your senses is thinking about how many poor decisions have you made recently? I know a lot of people beat themselves up. They're like, oh, I just didn't listen to my gut on that one. I don't know why I didn't. Yeah, why didn't you? I think for a lot of us, we get into desperate situations. We want things to happen so bad that we override all of our senses. The same thing could go with danger senses. Smell that just doesn't smell right and you keep going towards it or something of that nature. Or, you know, you're seeing things, you're feeling things that just don't feel right, and you keep going towards it. Um, let's put it this way. I got into a situation with a partner in a business, and the day that we were supposed to sign our papers for the partnership, I felt sick. I thought I had the flu. But I still went in there and signed the papers for the partnership because I was so, so desperate to try to lay down roots in, in my community and really have a community connection, have a business. I wanted a business so bad that I ignored all the warning signs. So my body knew what was up. It didn't like what the situation and the partnership failed <laughs> miserably. And I had to get out of the business a year and a half later. So that's where you need to hone in on your senses. It can protect you. Now, being anxious is sometimes a clue that things around you need to change. Your lifestyle, your job, habits. And you know what isn't working for you because it doesn't feel good to do it. Most folks who have an active addiction, they don't feel good doing that particular habit of an addiction that they have they just do it because it's their escape it's what they know how to use as a coping mechanism so thinking about that anxiousness thinking about things that don't make you happy thinking about signs that your body is giving you that something's not right i want you to pay attention to those going forward from today and going okay i've got a signal here Training your senses will help you with interpreting that signal. You can connect to yourself better and you can calm your nervous system better at the same time. Essentially, when you know yourself better, you are able to calm your nervous system is what I'm talking about here. And when you know your senses better, you're able to work on your nervous system and be more comfortable in your skin. So this thing called intuition we all have it. It's our senses, like I said before. We just don't use it. A lot of us are so freaking disconnected from our own selves that we have no idea what intuition is anymore. Let's take chronic pain for an example. I work as an acupuncturist in, in addition to being a naturopathic doctor, and a lot of folks have chronic pain. They, that's the only sense that they're paying attention to. They couldn't tell you how their food tastes. They couldn't tell you how their clothes feel. They couldn't tell you what it smells like around them. None of these things would come to their mind. All that they are heightened focus aware of is their chronic pain. And most of the time, the chronic pain is coming from tight joints, joints that aren't moving, tendons and ligaments that aren't moving, 
which are mechanoreceptors, sensors, steer sensory. So this is your mechanoreceptor intuition telling you you're not moving right. That'll help to fix the pain. But a lot of people go right for thinking they need pain pills or something of that nature to get rid of this pain um, or anti-inflammatory herbals. Those won't solve the problem unless you work on your mobility and your mechanoreceptor sense of sensing where it is in the world again. Then you will be able to get rid of that pain because now your mechanoreceptors and your proprioceptors, so your mechanoreceptors note movement, your proprioceptors note where you are in space. Those guys working together when they're free and able to sense properly, pain goes away. Now in episode 103, I talk about that in in greater extent and I'm not going to bore you with a repeat episode here by going all through that. I'd just like to hone in on the point that if you have chronic pain, you might be over aware or focus, hyper focused on that sense only. And maybe you're having trouble with gaining weight. Well, probably because you don't taste your food. And so then you don't even know like what your food tastes like. You don't even know when you're full. It, it cascades. And, and that's my point. Being able to pay attention to your senses better can help you prevent weight gain. It can help you manage your weight. It can help you with calming your nervous system down so that you don't have anxiety. It can help you to move better. It can help you to feel when something isn't right in the air. Have you ever walked into a room and you're like, oh, gosh, like when someone's going to deliver bad news or something like that, you can feel the weight of that particular event in, in the air. Or how about have you ever walked in a room when there's this great anticipation of something? There's going to be some news delivered that, you know, is going to be good. Everyone's excited. There's like this electricity in the air. When's the last time you felt something like that? Or change it around this way. What about if you're in a situation with a partner or child or someone that there's a lot of tension between the two of you? And so you come home and like, boom, you hit that wall and that tension's right there. That's a feeling, and that's something that's going to keep messing with your nervous system because that tension means there could be a bear around the corner. Guess what that does? That causes anxiety. There's a lot of different ways to interpret this, and I could talk for hours on ways, but the point is to try to get you to work with your senses so that you can hone in on them and make the proper changes to be able to either get yourself out of a situation in which one sense is being dominated, meaning if it's pain, meaning if it's your fight or flight response. You want to be able to have all your senses working properly to be a more balanced individual, to feel better, and to just calm the nervous system down in general. Because when we're working on all the senses, it tells the body that, okay, we're good. We're not just hyper-focused on one thing. So let's go through all the senses And let's talk about ways that you can train these particular senses to hone them in better. So sight is number one on my list, and I think it's appropriate since I've been having difficulty seeing lately at night. And so what I've done is I've now increased my beta carotene, as I mentioned, in terms of nutrients to help with night vision. But I've also now tested myself at night. I've dropped the lights down or turned them off completely or played with candlelight and just went about my business in the evening once it's dark to see if my eyes can adapt to that. I've also worked on picking up small objects that would be thin, just like my acupuncture needles and picking up my acupuncture needles and working with them in lower light to see if that will help me. Now, obviously, I know you all aren't acupuncturists, so working with sight can be a lot of different things to help you. And in fact, one of the biggest issues with sight right now for us is that we're all spending a lot of time on screens. So, you know, computer screens, TV screens, iPod, iPad, you name it, we've got all of the different screens in front of our faces, Kindles, etc. So, our phones in general, I think most people do most on their phone these days since the phones are like mini computers. So one of the ways to work with 
enhancing your ability to focus and using your eyes in harmony, especially for depth perception in particular. Because I think that's one of the things that tends to go as we get older is being able to determine the depth of a certain area and, and especially in relation to driving. So one of the things that I found in an article um, called The Bioneer, it a, it's a website, but they had an article on neuroplasticity and training. And one of the cool things they talked about was something called pencil push-ups. Um, and here you take a pencil or your finger and move it to the nearest point where your vision starts to blur. You stop there and and you stop when the pencil or finger starts to become two. And then you slowly move it backwards as with any training, you can keep doing this in, in multiple sets. But the idea would be to take that pencil and bring it as close to your eyes as possible to the point at which you start to see two of them. Then you slowly bring it away until you get to like an arm's length away. Now, the, another way to do this would be looking at things that are close and then looking at things that are far and, and playing with that. Treat it like it's a gym workout, you know, 15, 15 reps, you know, of it in, in three sets. I don't know. I, I have been playing with this, too, because it freaks me out about my sight. I want my sight. I want to keep it healthy. And I don't want computers to be ruining it and, and screen time to be ruining it. So finger, not finger, <laughs> pencil push-ups might be, or pen push-ups. You can take a pen and bring it as close to you as possible to where it starts to turn into and then put the hand out and slowly do it. Don't just quick slam your hand all the way out. You want to have this as a slow adjustment. So play with that for focus. Um, another big one for vision and focus that I like to do is to trace the outlines of rooms, like the corners of the rooms, or tracing the horizon line. So if you have mountains in your area or if you have skyscrapers in your area, trace those areas and and just trace them with your eyes, then stop and then repeat, reverse the other way, and do this, like I said, 15 reps three times around. That is a good workout for those eye muscles. I think a lot of us look forward a lot, but we're not looking to the left. We're not looking to the right. We're not looking up, down, around. I'm even encouraging you to roll your eyes. Yes, <laughs> roll your eyes. Move them a little bit more. And so one of the other cool training maneuvers that I do for the eyes as well is something that I do regularly in my office to test my patients. I, I make an H in space in front of them. And what it's doing is testing their ocular muscles. And it tests your cranial nerves in particular. So it's kind of cool. But just draw an H. Put your arm out an arm's length away from you and draw an H in space. And follow that H with your eyes. Maybe you'll be even better if you get pulled over for drunk driving. I did not say that. Nope. <laughs> they do test that. Um, I actually got pulled over once because my car looked like another car that was reported as weaving, and I was definitely not drunk um, driving. Uh, but it was kind of fun to see the whole test that they put you through. So anyway, train your eyes doing the H in space. That'll help them to the muscles to get to different motions because a lot of us don't even use our eyes in that direction because we're so focused on looking forward. So keep it, that one in mind. Another biggie about sight is playing outside with the different light and, and playing with looking at different colors. So another thing, reason to go outside. I'm going to give you five billion reasons to go outside because I think connecting with nature is probably your number two thing you need to do besides connecting with your senses. Plus, connecting with your senses flows into getting outside because the next one I'm going to talk about is hearing. Hearing is something that a lot of us take for granted, I think, until you lose your sense of hearing. A lot of patients come into my office with a lot of earwax in their ears and they're like, I can't hear out of my left ear. It's driving me nuts. And prior to that, we, we wouldn't even think about that. Or swimmer's ear, getting water stuck in your ear and then wax in front of it. Th these kind of things are annoying because they, they're cluing you into, oh, I've lost one of my senses. But when's the last time you sat in a park, closed your eyes, and tried to figure out where a bird was chirping from? Or sat on your front porch, closed your eyes, and tried to figure out where a siren was coming from? 
I highly encourage you to do that. It's kind of fun because sometimes your your hearing is so distorted because you have too many other things going on in your brain that you're focusing on that you might get it wrong. I actually did this game with some of my friends and they had squeaky toys from the dogs and they got a distance away out in the park and oddly enough I was wrong a lot when I wasn't honing in on my sense of hearing. So this is really important. I think a lot of us too don't disconnect completely when we're out in nature. You might be listening to this podcast while walking or running. I highly recommend that people spend time outside not connected to their phone and paying attention to things that are around you. Because the more that you're connected to that phone, if we bring it back to safety issues, you've heard how people have cut, um, have fallen and, and really managed to hurt themselves pretty good by not paying attention to where they're walking. But also, if there is someone that's around you that could harm you and you're staring at your phone, guess what? You have your senses disconnected. So, you know, little safety (laughs) public service announcements. If you're walking late at night by yourself, don't be on your phone. Um, Some people, I'm surprised all the time when I see this. It's crazy. So, Taking in sounds and being hyper aware of these sounds is extremely important to hone in your senses because your senses will be able to determine what's danger, what can be ignored. Even just sitting in your house with your eyes closed in the quiet and listening to the sounds of your house. It's, it's interesting. And in your house, you know where your heater is. You know where a fan might be. You know where certain things are that can make a noise. And so that's a great way to be able to tell if you're hearing it from the direction that you should. I highly recommend playing with that too. But outside is way better because you get to be outside. All right. Next one you want to be thinking about is taste. And taste and smell I like to clump together because they're both important in terms of being able to enjoy food. When is the last time you had a piece of food on your tongue and you really felt what it felt like and you could taste all the flavors that were in that food. I often make jokes when we go wine tasting and there's this list of like, it has velvety undertones and oaky undertones and I'm just going to say undertones over and over again. And really when I taste wine, I'm like, it tastes like wine. Well, that's because I wasn't turning on my senses And I wasn't focusing on what I was doing in that moment to hone in my senses. I have mentioned before, yes, I have a problem with overeating. Yes, I stress eat. Yes, I eat fast. And I'm working on that every single day. But being able to taste your food and really taste your food and slow down enough to taste your food and enjoy the food experience versus stuffing in food as fast as you can really goes a long way for getting you to eat less and can help with your digestive system as well because you're not going to overload it. And I am actively really working hard on being able to taste my food more and really putting words to the taste and what it feels like on my tongue because taste and feel, your tongue can feel. And yes, there's some textures that I don't like and probably a lot of people have texture issues, Maybe, you know, it's important to play with seeing what you like in terms of textures and what you don't. And just being conscious when you eat. So play with this at your next meal and subsequent ones and see if taste you can taste multiple flavors. Like if you could pick out the pepper and the salt and maybe like thyme or garlic or whatever that's in that meal and see. Maybe if you're into drinking wine, trying to see if you can find some of those notes of tobacco and berries and honey and whatever else might be in there. Hints of chocolate. I love those descriptions. They make me giggle, but all joking aside, I, you know, make, I I pretty much told my husband, I'm like, yep, tastes like wine. Yep, tastes like wine. And my two tastes are it's good or bad or it sucks my tongue. And so thinking about foods that are tart and what if they dry your tongue out or if they have that kind of a like drying effect on your tongue. A lot of teas have that effect on my tongue. It's, it's called tannins. It's 
the constituent of that particular tea, or in the case of wine, the wines, it dries the tongue. Or in my case, I say sucks my tongue a little bit. So I'm kind of weird. If you haven't listened to my podcast before, now you know. But really focusing on taste and smell. Because have you ever noticed that when you have a cold food doesn't taste as good? It's because taste and smell do go hand in hand. Now, I like to put words to what I smell, and I like to put words to what I smell and taste at the same time. And I think that's important for us to really kind of differentiate those. The same thing goes along the lines of smell and situations. Because remember, early in the podcast, I was saying that smell is connected to memory. And there are good memories, there's bad memories, there are indifferent memories. Like for me, if I smell that Aussie hairspray, it smells like grape, that reminds me of high school. If I smell, um, let's go with pumpkin pie, I will often kind of go back to Thanksgiving, and I think most people would in that case. If you smell apple pie, you think of what, grandma? Maybe you think of just delicious, you know, thinking about these different smells. Um, I like the smell of salty seawater air in the morning. It's relaxing to me. Some people might not like the smell of salt and seawater. It all kind of depends. You know, leaves in the fall, that kind of dry, crunchy. So see, look, I've got senses going with, with smell, the dry, crunchy smell. I often will, will put words to smell in terms of a, another sense, so crunchy smell. Don't know how to explain that one other than dry, crunchy leaf smell. Maybe you have some ones you can articulate that way too. So what does that mean? That smell and touch can go together as well. In my last podcast in, in episode 103, I talked a lot about walking barefoot and how I find it absolutely useful for you to be able to sense your environment better. I think going barefoot for a lot of us is a great sensory experience that we should all work on because it can help with balance and it can help with training your feet to be able to deal with certain situations. And I also think that a lot of us need to walk on our hands a little bit. And I don't mean like full-on handstand walk on your hands. I can't do more than five-ish feet myself. But what I'm talking about is bear crawling or walking on all fours and experiencing what that feels like. It's good for your mobility. It's a good exercise, but it's also something that can help you to to enhance your sense of touch. I also highly recommend with touch to close your eyes and touch things around you, whether it's into a backpack or, you know, feel a table and the items on the table. Or my favorite one is to close my eyes and go into my closet and touch my clothes and try to figure out what outfit or what sweater or what pair of pants I'm, I'm touching. Like guess what it is. It's a great way to enhance your sense of touch. And as one of my friends that listens to my podcast and um, was at dinner with me when we were talking about this, she was talking about touch in the sense of, well, what if, what if the lights were out and you needed to be able to get out of, say, a movie theater or a, a situation in which you were in danger? Having no sight but being able to touch and feel what things were like and find a doorway, huge. So reasons to work on honing in your sense of touch with your eyes closed. Because your sense of touch is much different when you can see what you're touching. Same thing goes with balance. I am a pretty decent standing on my BOSU ball, just standing on the BOSU ball with my eyes open. And so the BOSU ball is a balance tool. But as soon as I close my eyes and just try to stand there, it is like I start listing to the right. I'm like all over the place. So I challenge you to see how balance goes with your eyes closed. Another great way to test out how good you are at balanced. And with balance, let's get into balance. When balance is trained, the body's more confident in moving certain ways and moving better. And that is huge because to be able to flee a scary situation, you need to be able to move. But to be able to, 
you know, ward off a fall so or fall better, let's put it that way. Um, I have a lot of people that will come into my office in the winter when they've slipped on ice and fallen. Um, you know, some things you can't avoid no matter what you do. But if you are able to fall better or if you're able to catch yourself before you fall, huge. Because falls, of course, are related to broken bones and all kinds of setbacks in terms of mobility and health. And especially as you start getting over 60, and that's a big deal. But even when you're in your 20s and 30s, you don't want a broken bone. And so the better balance you have, the better you're going to be at sports, the better you're going to be at athletic training types of, you know, at the gym, the more you're going to be better with mobility, but the more you're going to be better at getting away if someone is coming after you, which of course is uh, always important. And like I said before, if your nervous system is on hyper alert and you're super anxious, having the body trained to fire on all senses and have those senses jump into action really nicely and coordinated is all boils down to training and training them. So I've talked a lot about mechanoreceptors and kinesthetics, so proprioceptive awareness and things of that nature in terms of motion and pain, especially in my last podcast. What I didn't talk a lot about is the sense of temperature. So a lot of us know if our hands and feet are cold, but we don't really know if there's heat anywhere else in the body or if a certain area feels cold. And this is an interesting one because in the Chinese medicine world, a lot of folks with digestive issues have cold stomachs or cold intestines. So I want you to sit right now or stand or where if you're moving, just stop sensing anything else and focus on temperature in your body. Is there one finger that feels colder than the other? Is one fingertip colder? Is one foot colder or warmer? Is there anywhere that's hotter? Do you feel any heat anywhere in the body? Now, if you're a little overweight, one of the interesting things to do is to touch your skin and see where you're colder or warmer. Chances are in areas that we have a little bit more weight being carried around, those areas are going to be colder. And it's because the body's basically using those areas as storage, kind of like your storage container that you might have somewhere, your storage closet somewhere, and you piled with junk that you forgot what's in there. Your body forgets what's in some of those things. One of the senses that you can develop is, is temperature and circulation. And if you have areas of coldness and things of that nature and being able to identify hey, my butt feels cold, hey, my flanks feel cold, or hey, this roll that I've got around my abdomen feels cold. All right, well, what are you going to do about that? Warm it up, get it moving. How do you do that? Through exercise, through different ways to promote circulation, infrared saunas, foam rolling, lacrosse balls, whatever it may be. But the idea here is to pay attention to areas that are cold. Your hands and feet are cold? Okay, maybe you have really tight hips and maybe really tight shoulders and maybe a really tight neck and you're not getting the blood flow to your hands like you should. In the Chinese world, the Chinese believe that circulation is related to proper mobility of the muscles, tendons, and ligaments, but also in terms of proper blood flow. How do you get blood flow moving? You move. You don't sit. You don't remain sedentary for too long. So paying attention to temperature in your body, big deal. Also paying attention to temperature as it relates to environments, too. There's a lot of research out there in terms of alternating temperatures from going from hot to cold to help with stimulating circulation. Something to think about. I highly recommend training your body to get used to hot and cold temperatures so that you can better adapt when you're you know, focused and not focused, but when you're put into the situation of being more hot or more cold, because I do tend to find when I interview patients in my office, a lot of them have cold intolerance or heat intolerance. And really that often is related to circulation. Yes, there might be a thyroid issue or something else going on, but truth be told, thyroid issues really are a circulation issue too, because thyroid hormones are converting in your tissues. So there you have it. But Doing some training with taking, you know, the end point of your shower and and making the the last few seconds of your shower turn it to a cool 
and then turn it back warm, turn it to cool, turn it back warm. So 30 seconds cold, three minutes warm, doing a little contrast hydrotherapy there. It's it's interesting, and you'll you'll notice you'll sleep better, and circulation will be better, and PMS has also been rumored to be a lot better too. Ice baths are another way to go about changing the temperature. That is a little more extreme. I'll be honest, I haven't done that yet. I might play with it. Maybe I'll do a podcast on it. I have a couple of frostbitten toes, so I'm not really sure how that's going to go because warming them back up after ice can be quite painful. But I might try it for science for all of you so that you can hear what happens. So now the last senses that I didn't go into great detail about are your chemoreceptors, otherwise known as your chemical receptors. And in particular, sodium concentration and carbon dioxide concentration are kind of the biggies in this department. There's other ones, but I like to talk about these because the body responds to having too much salt or not enough salt in it. And the body does respond to too much carbon dioxide versus not enough. And it's related to breathing. And salt is related to electrolyte intake. And most folks who are stressed are often going to have an imbalance with their salt intake, whether it's eating too much because their their body's kind of asking for more salt or just not being able to regulate their electrolytes because sodium, potassium, chloride um, are all part of the electrolyte balance in the body. And if the body is lacking or out of balance in sodium potassium chloride, that means your fight or flight system has been taxed for too long. Your adrenal glands are having trouble keeping balance of those guys. Also, fluid balance is related to this as well. And the same goes for if you're in fight or flight situation and you're you know breathing too shallow, too short, your carbon dioxide levels could be off as well. And so when I'm looking at labs with patients who are stressed, I'm often looking at, do does this person have a high amount of carbon dioxide and do they have imbalances in sodium, potassium, and chloride? And those checks can be easily done in a comprehensive metabolic panel called a CMP. You can ask your doc for it to see what's happening in your system. I think it's a great way. Most docs do check those, but I think it's a great way to look at how out of balance are your senses? And in particular, the fight or flight system, how stressed out are you? It's a great baseline check. There are other ways to check, like cortisol. Um, you can check in the saliva. But I like to look at sodium, potassium, chloride, and carbon dioxide as my indicators of how stressed out is your body and how much do you need to rein it in and hone in all of your main senses. So... I've given you a little breakdown on all the senses. There's technically nine main ones, and many can be combined um, in terms of training on the same day. I like to play with it. I highly recommend channeling your inner five-year-old and playing with your senses. If you have kiddos, use your kids to help you with the senses. Kids love games. And heck, I'm an adult, and I still love games. I love to, like, balance on one leg and throw a ball. It's fun. It's play and it's also helping you to hone in on your senses. There's no one way to do this and there's no wrong way to do it. The idea is to get in touch with your body. Become more aware of your senses and just practice a little sensory training each day through play. So that when it counts, you'll be on point with your senses and be able to detect when something isn't right, when something has gone off the rails, or when you need to get out of a situation, you're agile enough to get out of the situation. So a little intuition and sensory training for you today in terms of helping you with your mind and body, but also keeping you out of trouble. So <laughs> there you have it. You have survived another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krause. Have a great day, whatever you're doing. And by all means, please let me know if you have some topics you want me to talk about. I would love to answer some questions on the podcast. And if you have comments, please make a comment in my show notes at drjkrausnd.com. And don't forget, I will have show notes on my website at drjkrausnd.com so that if you want to see all the different senses and what training I recommend for for honing in on your senses, go over there and check it out. Alrighty, thanks for listening. 
Hey everybody, Dr. Janine Krause here. If you liked what you heard today, then head over to drjkrausnd.com to find my free resources and information to know when I post something new that's juicy that you might want to check out. Plus, head over to where you get your podcasts and like, subscribe, and write a review to help get the word out about me and help others at the same time to find me. It really does help and I really appreciate all of your reviews.